Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, patterns for long pip or anti spin play uh, and, and really the idea behind incorporating them into your table tennis game. Now, originally, uh, when I first put down the website that I was going to talk about patterns, my original idea was to probably run through anywhere up to say 10 set patterns uh, and have a video for each one explaining, okay, in this pattern you do this and your opponent does that and you do this, your opponent does that and you do that and that's hopefully you win the point and you, that's a, a fixed pattern. Um, having been a little bit of time passed since I originally put that down on the website and having thought about the way I play and uh, my game over the last year or two, uh, I sort of come to realise that that's, in terms of patterns, it's not exactly how I use them in a match. So what I want to do in this particular video is I, I want to talk specifically about um, how patterns fit into my gameplay and how I suggest you fit them into your gameplay. If then you guys want me to talk about some specific patterns, I'll, I'll do that, I'm quite happy to do that too. Um, but really in this video I want to um, keep it fairly short and sweet to the point and really just talk about how these patterns, um, how they fit in and um, how to make them work properly in your game. And what I mean by that is that uh, at the recent Australian Veterans uh, I was made even more aware of this. Um, it was quite noticeable um, because I was standing up to the table playing a, a combination back play, um, playing aggressive um, long pips on the backhand, thick rubber on the forehand, being very aggressive with my play. What I found though is that where I played the best and where I had the best results was not necessarily where I tried to pick a pattern and make that pattern happen at the expense of everything else, but instead where I used the tools and the strokes that I have at my disposal and picked the right shot at the time and allowed patterns to happen. So, say at the end of the match, you might be able to say, well, look, during that match, Greg used this pattern six times, that pattern five times, that pattern four times. Okay, so you could say, yes, there are patterns that were used, but what actually happened from point to point, whereas rather than saying, okay, it's the start of a point and I want to use pattern number one and try and force pattern number one to happen, um, when I did that, I tended to lose a lot more points and play not so well. And I think the reason why that happened was, is that when you try and force a particular pattern to happen, you mentally tend to get locked into that particular pattern and you probably also prepare earlier and commit to that pattern a little earlier than you normally would. At least I know I certainly do. What that then does is it gives your opponent earlier signals of what you're intending to do. And to give you a, a typical, typical example um, of what tends to happen is I like to, um, during my matches, one of my typical patterns is that I will serve a backspin, sidespin serve, curling in that direction to my opponent's backhand corner or to the elbow. And what I'm looking for is I'm trying to get my opponent to push the ball back to me, keeping the spin going but putting backspin on the ball. My next shot is that what I, what I like to do is roll with the long pips and roll them over towards his playing elbow. What I'm doing is then using that shot because my opponents pushed the ball, kept the spin on the ball, the spin from my serve is still on the ball, the ball when I roll it goes over and tends to bounce that way, often quite unexpectedly. Okay, my opponent doesn't realise it. The bounce sideways puts him off, there's sometimes a little bit of wobble that puts him off and I tend to get from my opponent a weak, hesitant return 
And if I can get it into that playing elbow as well, he, he has to pick one side or the other. But the kick of the ball often might get through a weak return. And what I'm then doing is usually, or at least in the last tournament, I was looking to come in and play the big top spin forehand. And that was a pattern I was, look, I was looking to play. Okay. It's a, pla a pattern that I used a lot. Now, what would go wrong quite often is I would do this serve, I'd go this serve and I would come knowing that I wanted to do that next shot, I would be prepared, back ready, weight going a little bit this way to move to the back end and my opponent would see me do that or I'd give it away somehow because I'd be doing serve, ready and my opponent would go to that corner and then suddenly I would be going trying to play that forehand or doing that occasionally but really off balance for my forehand and I found it very very difficult to recover and get a good forehand I'd always be like that or the ball would go past me because my weight was the wrong way and I would struggle. And what was happening it was because I was picking the pattern in advance and trying to force that pattern to happen. What worked a lot better for me was when instead of aiming for that one pattern is when I would go here, I would serve, I would recover and I would be ready for the ball to go anywhere. If the ball would come there I would play that shot, but I wouldn't be committed to it. So if the ball came this side, I would play that shot. So what was happening was instead of being fixed in my mind that I'm going to serve there, the ball will come here, I will do this, I will roll. Instead I said, I will serve there, I'll serve as well as I can, I will recover, and now I'm going to see what happens next. If the ball goes there, I'll roll. If the ball comes here, I will be prepared and I will loop and I will do something else. And occasionally the ball would come here and instead of rolling, I would do something, I would push or maybe it would come easy and I would twiddle and topspin and play something else. So at the end of the match, you would say, well, look, you know, Greg did that serve ten times and five times it came back here and he rolled with the pips and twice he twiddled and topspinned and a couple of times he pushed with the pips instead. And you say, well, Greg ran all those patterns. But what was happening was I wasn't forcing any of them to happen. I was using the abilities that I have and I was staying prepared for anything and then allowing the game to flow. And I think that's probably, when I'm talking about these patterns, that's the difference between trying to make a pattern happen and being prepared for anything, it's the flow of the game. My flow was a lot better. So again, I'm trying to keep this short and sweet so I don't waffle a lot. But when we're talking about patterns is that in, in any match and for any player, the patterns that I have are probably going to be a little bit different to the patterns that you have because you don't play exactly the same way that I do. And that's fine. It's good to be aware of what patterns you favour so know your strong patterns. I have a pretty good idea of what patterns I like. Um, and when I serve or when I return serve, I try and use serves and I try and use return of serves that lead towards the patterns that I like and try and do that. But what I find I have the best success is rather than committing and picking a pattern and saying, okay, my opponent's gonna serve here and I will flick wide and then I'll come here and I will twiddle and roll with my roll with my pips. Now, rather than committing to a particular pattern, I'm better off saying, okay, look, if he serves, serves short, I go there, I prepare, and if I have time, I'll twiddle. If I don't have time, and keep my options open, and I find my game flows a lot better. Looking back on a match, you're able to say, yes, I used this pattern so many times, that pattern so many times, that pattern so many times. That's fine. You will have patterns. You'll see that you'll have good patterns and you'll have bad patterns. And obviously you want to try and avoid too many bad patterns. So when using your serve, when using your return of serve, use them in such a way to lead towards your good patterns. If you're in a rally and the rally is fairly neutral, so nobody's got an advantage, 
then obviously, yeah, it's a good idea to try and set it up and do a uh, starting shot that leads into one of your nice patterns, if you can. But don't pick that pattern and ignore what else might be going on. Because when you do that, you tend to prepare too early and give away from your body language and your preparation what you're trying to do. You also tend to mentally get fixed on, I'm going to do that, this is going to come back. And when something different comes back, you're too slow to adjust, or at least I'm too slow to adjust and correct. And I find by actually just playing a good shot, being ready to play a ball on its merits, and then wherever it comes, I play the next good shot based on my experience, my positioning, what's coming at me and what strokes I have available. By doing that, my game flows better, I play better, and everything works better and when I was playing at my best that was what was happening yes I was using patterns I wasn't forcing them to happen they were happening because I was doing every shot according to what was best at the time knowing my game knowing what I knew about my opponent's game knowing what was going well what was not going well so that's really the concept in terms of these patterns for long pips and combination back play the main concept of this video is allow the patterns to happen rather than picking one and trying to force it to happen. If you do that, you'll find your game will work better. And again, as I said, if, if anybody wants me to run through um, a few basic patterns, um, I, I'm happy to do that from the point of view of explaining what's going on, but not from the point of view of saying, look, when you're about to serve, try and make that happen and commit to that because that's the wrong way to approach it. But to just explain, look, if I do this, he does that, this is likely to happen next, that's fine. It's good to know what's likely to happen next, as long as you don't ignore what the other possibilities are. And that's really just what I wanted to get across in this particular video. So uh, I think I've kept that a little bit shorter. Um, hopefully that's quite clear, um, what I'm trying to get at. And uh, any questions, just feel free to um, uh, whip me an email uh, post in the forum and I'll, I'll clarify as needed. But again, uh, thank you for watching.